Okay, this is. Uh, I finished redoing all 50 chapters. Okay, and right now we're posting those 50 again. But even they're starting to show some wear and tear. So, uh, we're going to start over again. And this is the introduction to Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord, God's book, that was dictated to me. His command, control, direction. You know, it took about, well, I don't know how many years, but, but we actually finished this book almost five years ago, and we've been putting it on video since COVID started. But this is the introduction, and, and what it is, it's a generic discussion of Isaiah 53 without trying to insert Israel, <clears throat> uh, Jesus, or even Moshiach. It's just these are what these verses are about. Okay, and through the book, you find out what you need to know about the day of the Lord. And how it, it, it differs so much from the Messianic era. I've even got a writing at KeithMcCartyMcCarty.wordpress.com um, called, it starts with, Messianic era versus day of the Lord. There is no Messianic era. That's not in the Bible. It's nothing God has anything to do with. Uh, primarily Rambam is the source behind it. They teach it like it's God's. And you think that doesn't make him high? I think I don't think the rabbis realize, particularly people like Kravitz and Skobank, Jews for Judaism, and Tovia Singer at Outreach Judaism. I don't think they really get it. Uh, how angry he can get and how it's it's really not something you want to do. Yeah, he's got a scroll of remembrance for a very special heaven he's putting together just for the people of the day of the Lord, which began in 48 when Israel was created and will uh, presumably end with my death. Um, I don't know that, I mean, he doesn't tell me that. That's just what I think happens. He doesn't tell me a lot of things. I'm not on the executive committee. I'm a servant. I just do what I'm told. I don't try to offer anything. I don't pray and I don't worship. He said, Keith, I know what you want before you do. And I know long before you <laughs> what I'm going to let you do or have whatever it is you need. And I certainly don't need your worship. He said, I got plenty of people out there taking care of that. So here's the introduction. I do, I, it may, well, I just don't know how long it's going to take. Isaiah 53 begins with Isaiah 52, verses 13 through 15, 13, 14, and 15. Three verses that are combined by quotes. They are the true beginning of Isaiah 53. They should be 1, 2, and 3 under uh, the chapter Isaiah 53. Okay, combined by quotes, that is followed by Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 6, six verses that are also combined by quotes. And they're very important, and yet nobody else seems to have them. I don't know if the translated uh, Bibles used by Tovia, by um, Jews for Judaism, Shabbat, Art scroll, and they're supposed to know everything. Uh, they've been they they've been tampered with. If, if the original translation was correct, they'd still have the quotes, or the original translators of their particular Bibles uh, didn't pick up on it, didn't understand it. Well, the JPS nineteen eighty five, which was begun from scratch, not from long ago, which is what I think. We have with these four organizations, or three in Tokyo, uh, well, outreach. <clears throat> I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if somebody tried to make the translation better, 
and didn't know what those quotes were about and just let them out. I don't know what happened, but it carried forward to today. But they're very important, and particularly with the Jews for Judaism commentary based on, they, they actually have 13 as, at the beginning of their 53, uh, at the beginning of their commentary on Isaiah 53 being Israel. They like the word exalt that's in there. But they, they're going to find out. And it's, and I, I'm sure we've already covered it. That exalt applies to Moshiach, me, the man described in 53, not Israel. And it doesn't say world exaltation anyway, but that's what he acts like. He just kind of takes off on that word, goes to Rambam, his Messianic era, and the world's going to speak Hebrew and uh, basically say, disavow their gods. That's two billion Christians and two billion Muslims disavowing Jesus and Allah. Really? That would be your Messianic era, a world of peace. <laughs> Among other reasons. Okay, this is 5213. Indeed, my servant shall prosper, be exalted, and raise to great heights. From a sinful man whose life has been lowly, full of grievous events and serious injuries, a man of pain and suffering, familiar with disease, that the Spirit of God alights upon and he rises like a tree crown to the great height of God's righteous servant. That actually is pulled from 53. 52, 14. Just as the many were appalled at him, so marred was his appearance, unlike that of man, his form beyond human semblance. This is the beginning of identifying the righteous servant as a man with disfigurement afflicted by God. I mean, that's, it's in 53. He's afflicted by God. Or we thought him afflicted by God. As though afflicted by God, blemished and crushed with disease. He is not a man without defect and scars, such as lambs, unblemished lambs and rams, unblemished rams, for a sin offering and guilt offering in the Torah. Rams would be for the guilt offering, which is a compensatory offering for breaking religious relics, debts owed, things like that. What, why, why guilt offering would show up in Isaiah 53 is... I, I don't know. There's just no purpose. I can see an unblemished lamb, and they say, well, it's sin forgiveness in Leviticus, you know, although it's actually just unintentional sins. But uh, rams, guilt offering. And that, and that makes Isaiah 53 Israel. One third of the murder of the Holocaust, Toby says, are Israel because they're guilt offerings. I have no idea what he's saying. None. None. I, I mean, Hitler's the one that offered them up. Well, why isn't he the righteous servant? He's not Israel. And here's, here's the kicker. So marred is his appearance, we're appalled. But then you have this, 53, uh, 52, 15. Just so, he shall startle many nations. Kings shall be silenced because of him. For they shall see what has not been told them, shall behold what they never have heard. Well, I, in this book, in the knowledge in it, qualifies for both of those. Nations, the Gentiles, that's what nations means in the Hebrew Bible, the Gentiles, startled, and kings, leaders of nations, silenced by seeing that there are four men to come Four righteous servants, prophet like Moses, Elijah, Moshe, and of course the man described in Isaiah 53, the righteous servant. Four men to come, and only God's righteous servant is described inherently and implicitly. 
God's righteous servant is also the descendant of King David, Moshe, as the sages believe, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses. They shall be startled in silence to hear that God's righteous servant is a Gentile, according to the scripture, supposed to be. God comes from Adam, Gentile lands. And of the peoples that are with him, that's the Jewish people. Well, he's got to have his representation. You can't know where he is if he doesn't have a man with him. Then that would be me, Moshe. And, and that's when he grants the covenant of friendships. He dismisses, has a reckoning with, dismisses all the shepherds of the world, all rabbis, and appoints one teacher. He calls David, my servant David, a shepherd, not a king. Not in this context with the covenant. And he appoints me as the only one he recognizes. And he'll only recognize them for the scroll of remembrance for the special heaven. If they teach this book, they take my teachings and start doing it themselves, correcting and correcting all the fallacies and false teachings of Judaism and bringing it into the modern era. You, they revive a, a language like no one has ever done before. An ancient language, they revived it. Hebrew. Well, it's okay to make changes. Let's revive Judaism. Make it current. Throw out this stuff like the world's going to exalt you. You're talking about two billion Christians. Have you ever talked to a Christian? You can't get them to disavow Jesus on your best day. Much less two billion of them. And God's not going to do it. He doesn't work like that. There's nothing in the Hebrew Bible to make you think God would change the minds of two billion men and women and children. Make them think differently. He's been trying to get me to think differently for 16 years. And as I tell well, okay, man. I have my complaints about that. Because it's a vicious, brutal process involving punishment, wounding, crushing, bruising, chastisement, and maltreatment. The big words of Isaiah 53 which are really a set up for the Gentiles who become Christians. Is the Gentile, according to the scripture, and that Jesus, being a Jew, cannot be God's righteous servant. Isaiah 63, that would go for the, the Jewish people too. <laughs> I mean, Toby your singer is not a Gentile, is he? He thinks he's the righteous servant. Uh, well, if six million can be all Jewish people gathered as one man, and you only use six million and say that's good enough, and Toby could say the same thing about one. One Jewish man is the righteous servant. Well, if they all are, all gathered as a single man, well, then you are too. Go out and do things the righteous God wants the righteous servant to do. Go build, go clear the way and build the temple for me. I'll just stay here in Houston. Isaiah 63 says God comes from Adam. This is now God's words. That those were my words before. That it is interpreted in Judaism to be Christianity, meaning he is coming from a Christian country. And of the people, in brackets, Jewish people, none are with him. His visible representation is a Gentile speaking and writing his words as Moses did. That's this book. Prophet like Moses. Knowledge of heaven, unsurpassed by anybody. Of course, you got to believe what I'm saying. But Okay. Starting up with 53 proper, 53 verse 1. Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now, that starts with the quote, and the quote ends at the end of verse 6. So all these people are the same. Who can, okay, this is Midrash form. I'm going to dissect this verse 
and give commentary on the different parts. Who can believe what we have heard? Commentary. The witnesses ask, who can believe that God redeems the Jewish people by the new covenant with sin forgiveness that is delivered by the messenger Elijah, who receives it from the angel of the covenant, who is the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit that alights upon the anointed one, that's Moshe, in Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verse 1, redeemed by the covenant of friendship that comes with his servant David when he sanctifies Israel by having the third temple built on his holy Mount Zion, not the temple now. We've ruled that out. You've, I'm sure you've heard me say that before. They want the temple now. It's not big enough. It's tainted by Islam and controlled by Jordan. Don't want anything to do with it. But Mount Zion, uh, it has to be on Mount Zion. And I don't know who's got, I, I've never seen a description of Mount Zion. I, I don't think it's just for Jerusalem. Is I think it's greater than that. Maybe it's the whole mountain. We see in a great big mountain, but the whole mountain that Jerusalem's on, maybe it's the whole thing. I'm sure they have uh, plenty of people who will tell me where it's at. Well, he's going to pick out the track. <laughs> or he'll let them pick it out, and then, then I'll tell them he, if he says yes or no. It's got to be big. redeemed, and these are things that they wouldn't believe. I mean, the fact that I'm even here is what they truly can't believe. But these are the things I'm bringing uh, in information that they don't have. Redeemed by speaking to his prophet again as he spoke to Moses. Face to face and friend to friend, and all by and with one man. The Lord calls my righteous servant, and that would be me. God's righteous servant who fulfills and completes the remaining prophecies of God in the day of the Lord. The remaining prophecy to be fulfilled is the delivery of two specific covenants and the arrival of God's righteous servant who makes the many righteous, the anointed one, and shepherd, God calls my servant David, Elijah, who was taken to heaven and returns as a messenger of the new covenant and recounsels the members of the Jewish families one to the other through Judaism and righteousness and clears the way for the Lord. And the prophet like Moses, who wrote the Torah at the command and direction of God and was his veritable mouthpiece on earth. I am the prophet like Moses. The, uh, the righteous servant is the most definitely the prophet like Moses. Because of this. Because he had me write this and Moses wrote the Torah. And I can't possibly have known this information. I promise you. I hadn't even read the Bible when he talked to me. I was an atheist for 50 years. And I was strong about it too. Too many bad things have happened to me. I just, I, you know, if there's a God... He didn't care anything about me. One of those people. You hear about them all the time. <coughs> Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? <laughs> he is his arm of strength and power that brings victory, vindication, salvation, and redemption it is revealed on God's righteous servant. Remember, he's lowly. Life of grievous events, serious injuries, familiar with disease. <laughs> and if I rise like a tree, tree top, and uh, all those other words from 52. Oh, here it is right here. Through his righteous servant, God does not perfect the world. He has his vindication upon Christianity, which the Messianic era and world exaltation leaves out. Islam and the Gentiles of the world who tormented the Jewish people. It's, you know, 
53, verse 2, For he has grown by his favor, God's, like a tree crown, like a tree trunk out of arid ground. He has no former beauty that we should look at him. Remember, appalled by his appearance. No charm that we should find him pleasing. Midrash, he has grown by God's favor out of arid ground. God comes from a Gentile country with a Gentile. To the Jewish people, God's righteous servant coming from a country of Gentiles and being a Gentile, he would have no form or beauty or charm to them. And that's just fact. <laughs> but if he comes from a Gentile country with God to Israel and converts Orthodox to Judaism and becomes an Israeli citizen, he will have form, beauty, and charm to the Jewish people. Yeah, I think that's the better way to... Well, you have all my... Oh, I don't remember reading that. Yeah, I, I, I think we got close enough. Uh, 53 verse 3. He was despised, shunned by men. This is the anointed one. Shunned by men. A man of suffering familiar with disease as one who hid his face from us. He was despised. We held him of no account. Despite a midrash, despised, shunned by men. He will be despised and shunned for declaring that he is the anointed one and the Lord's righteous servant described in Isaiah 53. And that's just fact too. Fulfilled. 150,000 views, and all I get is criticism on my comments. You just get so friendly. And all those other things, they say. And I think a lot of them are Christians, and they're just livid that I'm saying, indirectly, I'm saying Jesus is, is not 53. And that I also have a video where I just flat say it, he's a myth. It never existed. I've been with the God of Israel for 16 years. And uh, I promise you, there's no Jesus. And I can't wait to tell them with the Jewish people, the many and the multitude who are letting Christianity know because they're God's servant and he's passed his wrath to them, will throw a little wrath their way. This is the guy 53. This is Moshiach of 11. And then to hear me say, he doesn't exist. God is with me. It, you know, they'll deny it. You know, they'll fall on the ground, and start rolling around, probably. But uh, that's what's got to happen. You, I mean, all this we're the righteous servant. We're the, all Jews are the righteous servant. You know, just throw it out the window. I've, I've given you the commentary that he backs that up with, which is nothing but an absurdity. I still question why he even did it. Why not just keep saying we're waiting on Moshiach? He's the man in 53 like the sages and rabbis of old did. What made him change it? Did they think as anti-missionaries? He and Kravitz, Scobank, Jew for Judaism? Did they think it was a better way to fight the Christian saying 53 was Jesus? Well, you did a miserable job, people. Miserable. And the righteous servant doesn't do miserable, well, my videos would say different, do a miserable job. But anyway, God's running the show. Christians will despise and shun the man who startles the nations and silences their leaders for announcing that he is the anointed one of the Jewish people, that the Jewish people have been waiting for in God's righteous servant in Isaiah 53, that Jesus cannot be the Moshiach which means the only one of Isaiah 11, because he doesn't come from the stump of Jesse. And that Jesus cannot be the man described in Isaiah 53. Well, I've got, we've got chapter 21, 11 parts. No, that's Rashi. Well, we have in Isaiah 53, where the sole intent of that particular video is 22, it's, it's, it's 22 something. Um, 
can't be Jesus. That he doesn't fit a single verse except for one. The last one that says the man's a sinner. Because he is. God's got a top ten lines of Jesus Christ from the New Testament. One of them is a whopper. God calls it the greatest lie and deceit in the history of mankind. And I agree. It's got to be and deceived right now. The Jewish people will despise and shun him for the reason they expect and have been taught that the anointed one is Jewish, not a Gentile, and the messianic era of exaltation, redemption, and restoration in the world to come, they have been taught of by the sages and rabbis, will not be occurring. Now, that's the falsehood that needs to be done away with, rabbis. They all teach that, it seems like. It is the nature of people to despise and shun a man who has no visible proof to substantiate his claim that God speaks to him as God spoke to Moses. That he is a man prophesied to come in the Hebrew Bible. That he is a messenger and deliverer of covenants of God. That the spirit of the Holy God has alighted upon him. And that he offered himself for guilt to God. What I can prove is I was crushed with disease, cancer. There's medical records on that. Of course, you got to go back 22 years to find them. Where they gave me one month to live, untreatable. Never saw a doctor again. And yet here I am with long life. And I got three children. And I have seen them. It's been a while. That is substantial proof of 5310. And then there's this book with this knowledge no other sage or rabbi has ever even thought of and points out all these fallacies and false teachings. That's why I have no trouble getting it published, by the way. You send it to a Jewish publisher and all they know are what these rabbis have told them. What does he mean, no Messianic era? I'm not printing that. You know, somebody will come through. Some rabbis will decide they want to be in the scroll of remembrance. They want to teach this book. And they'll tell their publisher or find publishers who will listen to them when they say, this is him. This is happy. This is real. This is what God said was going to happen, and he's doing it. Why is it so hard for everybody to believe? Just because it's not the way you thought Judaism was, rabbis. Well, try to get humble. Get a little humility out there. Somebody knows more than you, and he's not a rabbi. That would be me. All you got to do is read the proof. Take the time to read the proof. I'm not talking to anybody who hasn't read it. Because nobody's going to believe me from my words. I just read all this shunning and despising wine. A man of suffering, familiar with disease. God's righteous servant is a man who has a life full of pain, suffering, injuries, wounds, accustomed to illness and disease. Who hid his face from us. He was despised. We held him of no account. Commentary. A man who is despised and held of no account is not going to go out among the people until the procession of him changes and he is asked to. Of course, I mean, you could argue that I'm doing it with these videos, going out amongst them. I'm not hiding my face, at least not anymore. Now, this just started two years ago. Already fulfilled. 53.3. Yet it, or partially. Yet it was our sickness that he was bearing. Our suffering that he endured. We accounted him plagued, smitten, and afflicted by God. Midrash. It was our sickness that he was bearing. Our suffering that he endured. The sickness and suffering of these people is not being righteous. The witnesses suffer the sickness of not being righteous and not being in right standing with God. Guilt. God's righteous servant suffers by bearing and enduring the wounding, chastisement, punishment, bruising, crushing, and maltreatment laid on him by the words and power of God.